having your relatives come back in pieces in order to deter future relatives from being taken. All right, so that's a somewhat macabre uh, 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 version of this. Let me give you one other version. There are whole areas of the economy where reputation is crucial, where if people played according to their backward induction sane incentives, we'd have a disaster. All right? But having a reputation here isn't, a, isn't necessarily a reputation as a tough guy. It could be somebody, a reputation who, uh, for somebody who's a nice guy. It could be a, you want to have a reputation for being the sort of person who derives pleasure and utility from, quote, doing the right thing, from acting honestly. Right? So think about certain professions where the reputation of the, of the person in the profession is crucial. Doctors, for example. Right? It's crucial for a doctor that he or she has the reputation of someone who, wants, who tells the truth, otherwise you'd stop going to that doctor. Right? Accountants, accounting firms, rely on having a reputation for being honest and, and, and not cheating the books. When they stop having that reputation for being honest, think of Arthur Anderson after the events in Enron, they pretty quickly cease to be in business. Right? I, said that, I gave that example a couple of years ago. It was very embarrassing because it turned out Arthur Anderson was in the class, literally. Arthur Anderson III was in the class. These things happen at Yale. All right? But nevertheless, all right? All right? Arthur Anderson relied on his reputation, the firm relied on his reputation, as an honest firm. And it was worth behaving honestly to maintain that reputation for future business. All right? So that's, I mean, reputation is a huge topic, and my guess is that the next time there's a Nobel Prize in game theory, it'll be for this idea. All right? So uh, that's my prediction there. Now, having said that, I want to spend the whole of the rest of today playing one game and analyzing one game. All right? So we're going to play this game, and for this game, I need a couple of volunteers. Uh, so I'm going to uh, pull out some volunteers. Uh, well, anyone want a volunteer? I need two volunteers for this game. How about my guy from the football team? Oh, was that a raised hand? It wasn't a raised hand. How about my guy from the football team? You're from, is it football team? Baseball. Baseball team. Even though that's actually, that may be unfair in this particular game. Uh, this particular game, may, that may be unfair. Maybe I'll take someone who isn't in the baseball team. I've got anyone who's in the football team. These guys. These guys in the football team. Okay, great. Great. Okay, so you two guys, right? Uh, I need you at the front. And your names are? Chevy. Shebby. Shebby? Patrick. Shebby and Patrick. So Shebby and Patrick are going to be our volunteers. Now the idea of this game is you guys provided the volunteers. Wait, wait down here a second. You guys provided the volunteers. This game involves two uh, volunteers who you just provided and two wet sponges. I will provide the wet sponges. So I have here uh, a couple of sponges. And in a minute I'm going to wet them. And I'll tell you what the rules are in a second. Okay, so I'm going to give one of these sponges each to, to, Shebby, and, to Shebby and Patrick. All right, I'm then going to position Shebby and Patrick at either end of this, of this central aisle, of this, of, this, of this aisle here. All right, and the game is going to be as follows. It's important that everyone listens to the rules here because I'm going to pick two more volunteers in a moment. All right, so the game they're going to play is as follows. Each of them has one sponge. It's crucial they only have one sponge. And they're going to take turns. And when it's your turn, as long as you st have your, still have your sponge in your hand, you, have to, you face a choice. You can either throw your sponge at your opponent, all right? And if you hit your opponent, if you hit your opponent, you win the game. Or you have to take a step forward, all right? So either you throw the sponge or you take a step forward, all right? Now, there's a crucial rule here. Each player only has one sponge, and once they've thrown that sponge, they do not get the sponge back. Do right, you understand that? Once you've thrown the sponge, you do not get the sponge back. So once again, if you throw your sponge at your opponent and you hit your opponent, then you've won the game. But if you throw your sponge at your opponent and you miss, the game continues. <laughs> All right? All right? So let's make sure we understand that. If you throw your sponge and miss, the game continues. You still have to step forward. So what's your opponent going to do at that point? What's your opponent going to do? Let's make sure that our, our football players understand this. All right? All right? So, no, that wasn't meant that way. Hi, they could have been soccer players. Come on. So, all right? I didn't appreciate that very much. Sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. I didn't mean it that way. So if, if, uh, if your opponent, whose name is... 
Patrick throws and misses, what are you going to do? I will walk forward until I slam the sponge. There in his you face. see. Okay, great, great. You walk forward until you <laughs> politely put it on his head. Okay, everyone understand that if in fact you throw and miss, you've lost the game because the other guy can wait until he's standing right on top of you and just place the sponge gently on his head. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, for fairness' sake, it's important that these sponges are equally weighted. And I'm going to wait them. I'm going to put water in them now. And since this is you know, nothing but the best for Yale students, I'm going to provide Yale University spring water. <laughs> Who knew that Yale University had a spring? It's kind of a phrase. Huh? <laughs> if it makes you feel better, you can think of this as American beer. <laughs> All right. Sorry, sorry. All right. So let's. And I'm not going to make these too heavy, partly because it makes it too easy, and partly because I don't want to get sued. All right, so I'm going to squeeze these out somewhere, away from the wires. All right. All right. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to get our judge here uh, to weigh them. Can you, oh, I need a mic here. So let, me just get, let me get a mic. So, OK, so I want you to hold those sponges in your hands and tell me if they're equally weighted. Yeah, pretty equal. Pretty yeah. equal. OK, they're pretty equal. Everyone agrees? Mm -hmm. All right, so how is this going to work? I'm going to give the blue sponge to Shebby, is it? Yeah. And the green sponge to... Patrick. Patrick. And Shebby's going to stand here, and Patrick's going to stand as far back as I can get him on camera, which I'm going to, I'm going to be told how far back I can go. Don't go too far. Okay, come, come, come back, come back, Patrick. Too ambitious. Too ambitious. Come back, 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 back. Keep up. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Stop. No, keep going. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start here. Start quite close, actually. All right. All right. Everyone understand how we're going to play this, all right? So. Uh, Shebby is player one, Patrick is player two. Shebby has to decide whether to throw or to step. I'll step. I'll step. Okay, let's, let's just hold the game a second. All right, now it's Patrick's turn. Does anyone have any advice for Patrick at this point? Who, who thinks? Who thinks? Okay, wait, wait, wait. If you, think, if you think throw, raise your hand. If you think step, raise your hand. There's a lot more steps than throw. I thought the Yale football team was good this year. Okay. All right. Step, uh, your choice, step or throw. All right. Oh, I should announce two other rules. It's kind of important. I should have said this. First, a step, a step has to be a proper step, like a yard long. And second, I think this will work in America, gentlemen never, never duck. All right? All right, no, no dodging the sponge, okay? All right, Shelby, your, uh, your turn. Uh, Let me put the mic on you, right? I don't really trust my arm. I'm going to step. All right, so you're stepping again. <laughs> Let me go to Patrick, all right? I feel like I'm in the line of fire here. Patrick, what are you going to do? I'm going to throw. Patrick's going to throw. I'm really going to get out of the way then. All right? We'll see this in slow motion. Come on. Oh. oh. Continue, continue. All right? So you have to take a step forward. So Shelby's going to take a step forward, I assume. And Patrick's going to take a step forward. And Shelby's going to take a step forward. And Patrick's going to take a step forward. And you, you can... All right. All right. Good. So a round of applause for our players. Thank you. What happened to my... There we are. So I think we have time to do this once more, and then we're going to analyze it. So I want to get two women involved. I don't think this is too sexist otherwise. So can we, get, can we have two women in this class, please? Two volunteers. Come on. You can volunteer other people. Ah, there's a volunteer. Thank you. Great. And so, great. Okay, great. Thank you. So your name is Jessica. Jessica, and your name is. Let me get the mic over to you. Clara Lee. Clara Lee. Clara Lee and Jessica. All right. We'll start at the same positions. We'll use the same sponges. Uh, and I need to, need to remind you where that position was. So, Jude, just give me a thumbs up when I'm in the right position. All right. Good. Good. All right. Same rules. Uh, Clara Lee and Jessica. We'll let Jessica be player one. So, Jessica, you can step or throw. What do you want to do? Going to step. Going to step, OK. Uh, you know what would, might be a good idea? When, Ali, why don't you, use, why don't you put the mic on, on Clara Lee so we have a mic at either end and run to and fro. That's good. All right, so Clara Lee, what are you going to do? I'm going to step. You're going to step. And Jessica, what are you going to do? I'm going to step. Going to step. Ali and I are in danger here, but never mind. I'm going to step. Any votes now? Uh, do people think that Jessica should throw? If you think she should throw, raise your hands. There's a large majority for steps, so up to you. What are you going to do? I'm going to step. Going to step, okay. Clara Lee, any decisions? I mean, 
This is pretty light. I don't think it's. It's a pretty light sponge. It. It's pretty hard to throw this sponge. We just we've seen that. Step. Okay. Stepping again. There's some baby steps. Um, I'm gonna throw. You're gonna throw. Okay. Here we go. We'll get out of the way. Oh. Okay. Continue. Continue, please. Clarice's turn. Your step. <laughs> Jessica has to step. Clarice has to step. All right, good, good. All right, so, so we've seen how the game works. Everyone understands how the game works. I want to spend the rest of today analyzing this game. All right, and before I do so, before I do so, uh, we should just talk about what this game is. Uh, let me get some new boards down here. All right, so one, one quick announcement. I'm going to analyze this, and we're going to spend the rest of today analyzing this, but I'm going to prov this is going to be quite hard, so I'm going to provide you a handout that I'll put on the web probably tomorrow that goes over this argument. So you don't have to take detailed notes now. I want you to pay attention and see if we can follow the argument. Okay, so this game is called Duel, not surprisingly. And you may wonder, what are we doing uh, some of my colleagues are here. What are we doing throwing, you know, having a duel in class? And of course, one answer to that is it's kind of fun watching the future leaders of America throw wet sponges at each other. That's probably reason in itself. But there are other reasons. Duels are real, are, are, you know, are real games. So those of you who uh, are well-versed in Russian literature, those of you who are well-versed in Russian literature will have seen duels before, right? or at least read, read of duels. There are some famous duels in Russian literature. Anyone, anyone want to tell me some famous duels in Russian literature? Any Russian majors here? No? Nobody want to give me a, sh a shot at this? Really, nobody? This is Yale. Come on. Well, how about in War and Peace? Okay, there's a duel like this in War and Peace. All right, and in War and Peace, I think we're, and without giving away the ending, actually it's in the middle of the book and it's 800 pages long, so it isn't exactly the ending. Right, but in War and Peace, I think we're led to believe that the hero, the protagonist, uh, Pierre,